Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have 10 beautiful stars and striped themed DIYs for you for your patriotic decor. I know you're going to love all of them. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And if there is any projects in today's video that you do like, remember to hit that thumbs up button. But let's make some DIYs. I absolutely love this project. I think you're gonna like this one too. It's super fun and super easy. So I take these two squares that are from a pack of five or six wood squares that you can get at Dollar Tree, and it's five or six in a pack for a dollar. And I'm gonna paint one of them white and then the other one blue. And I give them each a couple of coats just to make sure that they're completely covered and look really good. And I do front and back on them both. I found these cute little shape puzzles at Dollar Tree and grabbed them specifically to do something for 4th of July because I love those little star shapes. So I'm going to use three of those stars and I'm going to coat both of them or all three of them, not both, there's three, all three of them in white paint. I then tape off two stripes on my one uh, white board there and then paint the negative space red so that way I'm going to have red and white stripe if that makes sense so you can see I'm taking that tape off so I'm left with some stripes there. If you have watched me ever before you know I do like to distress things. I distress every single thing almost and so I do give this uh, really good sanding with my emery board to clear all of those edges off give them that really roughed up and weathered look and then I do the same thing with my blue and give all of the corners some good attention to make this look really weathered of course this is completely optional and personal this is going in my home so I'm decorating it how I like to see my things look so that you can see what I'm going to do with the stars there obviously this is coming together I found this little ampersand sign at Walmart. I believe 97 cents was what the price was. It could have been $1.97. I'm not 100% sure, guys, but it was less than $2. But I want my stars to match, so I do take some mineral chalk paint and paint each of those stars to give them that weathered look to kind of match that ampersand. And so I'm using some super glue as well as hot glue on that, so that way I can make sure it's going to hold because this is what's holding everything together. And I do, there we go, I place that down. And I did glue all those stars down. And I'm just showing you, you can use some twine to use it like as a door hanger on a wreath, or you can use some Jenga blocks on the back of it to have it stand, or you can just have it like on a tiered tray just to kind of lean up against something. I did take some jute twine and made a cute little twine bow. And there you go, you have stars and stripes. I think this is going to be so cute in my 4th of July decor. Let me know down in the comments if you were to make this where you would put this. This DIY was inspired by a flag that I saw at Vintage Market Days. So I'm just taking a wooden dowel just out of one of the packages you can get at the craft store or at Dollar Tree. So you just need one wooden dowel. And then I'm just using some scrap fabric that I have. You want something that um, kind of shows like a red and white stripe. It can be as bright, big stripes, little stripes, however you want, just to kind of give the impression of a flag. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this little glue gun. I got this little glue gun from Hippo. It's kind of a cordless and it's got like this little teeny nozzle on it it is a great glue gun I can leave a link to that down in the description box if you would like I think that it works great but this was the first project that I made with it so I'm just using a little bit of glue you could easily use some of the unique stitch glue to do this with um, however this one I'm not going to it's just kind of very rustic so I feel like the hot glue is okay to use and this glue doesn't get super hot so I wasn't burning myself with it but I'm just folding back all of the edges, like the seams, creating a hem, so that way you're not gonna have any frayed fabric. Now, frayed fabric might look really cute, so if that's the idea you're going for, very rustic like that, you can definitely do that. 
And then I'm doing just the fourth side. This is going to be the side that goes around our little wooden dowel. So I did want to make sure that that didn't fray either. So I have this ribbon. This came from Joann's. I've seen a little star ribbon like this at Dollar Tree. I've seen it at Hobby Lobby. So anything similar, some fabric would work uh, really easily too. Even like polka dots if you didn't want to do stars or something. So this is just wired ribbon. So I just only need to fold down the edges that I cut so that way the fabric or the excuse me the ribbon is not going to fray and then just using my little glue here I just put it on the little bottom or actually I put on the top piece because I'm putting on the top there to make sure that sticks and then you'll kind of see how I flip this around here there we go and so then that little piece of the blue fabric is on the table there and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the other three sides of it and then you just fold that flap of fabric over so it's just giving the idea of a cute little rustic flag here and now we're just going to attach our dowel. So you can see I just kind of roll that fabric over it and I decide to put, and I'm just making sure it's all lined up and how it looks, because you can just kind of eyeball it how far you want that dowel to stick out of the top and how much you want actually curled around. So now I'm just putting some hot glue right around where the dowel is because I want that dowel to be in place before I fold the fabric over. So I do a bead of hot glue among, along the dowel and then along the edge of the fabric to fold over so that way it will glue it to itself to make this darling little flag. But look at how cute that looks. I think it looks so cute. It's gonna be perfect to stick like in a plant or stick in a little cute mason jar or something like that. Super fun, that wired ribbon makes it so you can kind of bend it a little bit. Here it is in a little plant. I think this looks darling, even coming off of like a tiered tray. So easy. I just use scrap fabric that I have, but it would not be very expensive to go get any other little fabric or anything like that. And I think it's just darling. Now this is the wind chime kit that I used the little circle piece out of earlier. I am just going to take my little piece of America here and at first I thought, because it's got a lot of writing on the front, I'll flip it over and use the back. You guys, it didn't even dawn on me that like it's not going to be facing the right direction until I finished sanding this and was looking at it going, oh wait, I have to have it facing this way. That's kind of just, you know, the correct way, I guess. Anyway, so there's a lot of writing on there it would have been so much to sand off and i wanted to do kind of a natural wood look but instead i'm just going to paint it white so i'm going to kind of use like a reverse stencil technique on here so you can use stickers from dollar tree you can just do regular stencils if you want to you can leave it blank i did use my cricut and cut out this was from cricut's design space i just typed in um actually land that i love and this little design came right up and so i just sized it to the right shape there and then cut that out so i'm going to put that on it doesn't matter what kind of vinyl you're using. You can just use Dollar Tree vinyl uh, to do it if you want to. That works great. I can't remember if that's what I use here or not, but I'm going to split this in half and I'm going to do half of it blue and half of it red. So I just use a pouncing motion up and down with my little sponge brush here, making sure that there's not a whole ton of paint on my little sponge brush here, but enough for coverage. And I do end up doing two coats on each side of this. After the blue side dries, I just take off the painter's tape and I place it back down on top of the blue paint and then paint the red side so it gives a clean line there. Once both sides have dried completely, you just go back in with your weeding tool or whatever you use and you're just going to peel back those letters and it's just going to reveal that white paint underneath and the, you know, the letters here like you can see here. I think it turns out really well. I don't know what it would have looked like with the natural wood color. This was kind of a happy like accident, I guess, because I really like the way that that white, the white letters pop against the red and the blue. So, and you can just see those peel off very easily. And just any kind of stickers, letter stickers that you do would work as well. You could also use um, like printing on tissue paper. I mean, I have gone over in my videos so many different techniques to do if you don't have access to a Cricut. So there are definitely options to do different things on here. Now I love to distress things. And so I go over everything and distress it. I did a collaboration with my friend Favi a couple of days ago and she did some patriotic Core and mentioned that when she distresses things for patriotic it reminds her of like the hardship that we've gone through as America and how that's what makes us stronger and I really love that analogy with the distressing and so that's kind of what I was thinking of when I did that. Now I just take some of these cute little beads that I had you can buy some at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to feed them through because there was a hole on either end of this and I just thought it would be cute to make a little beaded garland and I just make a tassel out of a bunch of different baker's twine the red and blue I had some uh, white jute and some regular jew and just made a cute little tassel i love to spray tassels after you make them and straighten them out it relaxes them and makes them very straight uh, and so that way you don't 
you don't kind of get like the little ski wampus little things flying everywhere. So I just tie that on to the end of this and that's really all there is to this. This might actually be one of my favorite projects from today. I love how this turned out. I've seen cute little signs at Hobby Lobby that have said this, and I just think it's darling. Whether you put it on a tear tray or like hanging from a little plant like this, I just think it is the perfect red, white, and blue. I love the saying on it, and I just think it's absolutely darling. I have had this little windmill from Dollar Tree sitting in my stash for a little while now and it's kind of been staring at me waiting for the perfect project and I feel like I've done a good job with this one so you'll have to let me know what you think. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of dismantle it a little bit. So I just kind of take off that front little button on it and then just using some a cross between pliers and then some wire cutters. I kind of just bend and pry and it does come apart pretty easily. Just take just a little bit of work, but like most Dollar Tree stuff, it's not too bad to get apart. And then I take uh, one of the blades and I just trace it across the, my scrapbook paper that I'm going to use. And then I'm just gonna use some Mod Podge and paint that onto each of the blades and then just place the scrap of paper down and I'm going to press it really tightly to make sure that it gets a good bond and then just kind of rub out any bubbles or anything. To make this have a really crisp, clean edge on each of these, I just take my emery board. You could use a finger sander, sanding block, sandpaper, anything like that. Sometimes the emery board just gets into some tight spaces that some of those other things don't, at least for me. So I am using a downward motion, so you wanna go downward so you're not peeling up the scrap of paper. And it's just going to sand off the edge to give this a really crisp, clean look. So now I'm going to do the center little button. So I'm just going to trace it out and do the same thing with it with the Mod Podge and with sanding. Then you're going to take any type of sign blank that you have. This happens to be a wood canvas that I had. I think I purchased this one at Walmart. And, uh, or you can just use any type of sign from Dollar Tree, but I coated the whole base in white chalk paint. And now I am just going to tape off some stripes. So I use a piece of tape as my spacer to put in between. You can see here, I'll put that down. And then I put the next piece of tape down and peel that middle one up. That leaves you a perfectly spaced stripes that we're going to do. We're gonna paint red stripes on top of this white base and I pounce along the edge of the tape to give it a seal and then I kind of go back in and that's when I fill in all the negative space there. So I do this throughout the whole piece both on the front and on the sides. And now for what we hope is one of the most satisfying things is when you peel the tape back and you can see those nice crisp lines. I think this turned out really good. There's not any bleeding on here. I do just have a couple of spaces that my fingers touched with white paint that I had to go touch up, but that's super easy. And I'm going to take my emery board. You can use sandpaper or anything. And I, you know how I distress things. So I'm going to go through, kind of want this to look like a little bit of a faded flag, if you will. So I'm just gonna go sand all of the edges. And then I do, since you are doing red and white, you wanna make sure that you do the stripes individually. You don't wanna kind of cross the red over onto the white or it really will make those white stripes turn a red color. So I actually don't distress the white stripes, just the red ones, if that makes sense. So then I am going to put some glue just on the ring behind each of the blades and then in the middle. And then I am just going to firmly place that down and hold that windmill onto the base and just hold it tight until that glue dries. And then I'm going to glue that little button on the front to give it kind of a complete look. 
I love how this turned out. I'm so excited to put this in my house for 4th of July. I go overboard for 4th of July. I know a lot of you guys have left me comments stating that you do the same thing for 4th of July. And I think this is going to be the most perfect addition to my decor for 4th of July. I also just want to let you know that I did get this scrapbook paper at Joann's. They have some really cute 4th of July scrapbook paper. So let me know down in the comments if this is something that you think that you would recreate. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. So I'm taking a couple of these little planks from Dollar Tree. They come in a package, I'll show you here. There's like seven or eight or something in a package, maybe six, I can't remember exactly. And then I just had a little scrap piece of triangle uh, wood there, but you can also use one of these arrows from Dollar Tree. I just didn't wanna cut my arrow up since I already had those little scrap pieces of like the painter stick. So I'm cutting a little bit off of the end of one of these planks so that way they will kind of stagger and vary in height. And I'm just going to cover both of them in white chalk paint as a good base there because I'm gonna add some red and some blue to them so on one of them I just had some little star stickers you can just use any stickers you get like from Dollar Tree the store you can cut them out on a cutting machine and I'm just going to and I randomly placed them I didn't want them to be super organized or anything in like perfect stripes or anything so however you want to do it I just randomly placed them on there and then just pouncing up and down with the blue paint I kind of go over all of the star areas first and then I pounce up and down over the whole area there let that dry and if I need to do another coat of paint I just paint over it normal on the other one I just used some little tape this is like the exact size of like washi tape that you just put on there uh, any type of um, stencil or anything like that just so I can have some cute little stripes on this one and then the same thing I just pounce up and down with my paint until I get the entire thing covered and since it's red paint you usually do need to do a couple of coats and then I'm just going to peel each of those cute little stripes back there revealing like the red and white stripes and then I will go in and sand this you can kind of see I was talking about in one of my other DIYs that if you sand it the white stripes kind of become pink so you just want to be careful when sanding those or just know that that can happen because you can kind of see where that is and then on this one I'm just going to pick off each of those little stars that's just going to reveal the white stars there to me I mean you could easily just stick on white stars too however it works for you I just kind of like this reverse stencil process and then I am going to go ahead and sand and distress this I love distressing things you guys know that I love farmhouse and I think it just has a very rustic country look to it and it's I just love that style so again if you don't want to do that you don't have to so I'm going to place this little piece here it's going to look like a little rocket I'm trying to make little fireworks here so I just paint the triangle piece red and then I'm going to place diagonal stripes onto this little one I thought some little diagonal stripes in contrast to the other ones would be really cute and I decided to do this part of my little rocket in the blue so I just kind of paint all over that so you can kind of see how it all looks here so now I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the edge of my little red and white stripes here and then I'm gonna place the front pieces together and push them back so all the excess hot glue comes out the back so I can scrape it off if I need to. And then I'm just going to layer these together here. And I just think this is gonna look so cute. So now I'm just distressing these pieces to make sure that they all kind of match with the distressing there. And I'm just going to glue this right onto the front and then I will glue the little top of my little rocket there. Now my back pieces I need to make into fireworks. So for the little fuse or the, I guess it's not a wick because that's it's not a candle. So for the fuse, I guess it is the right term. <laughs> I'm just gluing some twine and I've just sprayed the twine with a little bit of water to make sure that it sticks up straight. And then I just glued four little tumbling tower blocks together and then I'm just staining them with a little bit of anti wax this is just going to be what I'm going to glue these to as my platform to have them set up on so I just use some hot glue on the bottom of my little fireworks to set them on top of that little stand this has to be probably my favorite project today I love how this turned out it is so cute it's perfect for a tiered tray to set like on the top of one or just like a little shelf sitter somewhere or just to have a little cute red white and blue somewhere popping I just thought it was really cute for this project I needed a heart shape cut out of wood now you can find heart shapes cut out of wood at Walmart, at Hobby Lobby, you can even find them at Dollar Tree. I did not have any of those, so I decided that I would make my own. I've become such a fan of using my jigsaw that I just took a heart template, you could freehand it, and I just went ahead and traced it onto some MDF board and then cut it out.
I recently burned up the motor in my sander and so I had to hand sand all of these edges. You definitely, when you're cutting MDF board, uh, wanna make sure that you do kind of round all the edges there. It sands super easy, so it didn't really matter that I was using it with my hand. I didn't even have a sanding block or anything. I just went ahead with regular sandpaper and just went around softening all of the edges of this and giving it almost like a carved out of wood look. I then took it back into my studio and I got some white paint and I give this um, two to three really good coats of any white paint just to give it that base color. I did have a star wood shape from Dollar Tree, so I just cut the tassel off that and I'm using my spackling to fill in that hole where the tassel, the jute twine was. And then I am also going to give this uh, two to three really good coats of white paint. Again, this is just giving this a base color. I'm going to paint some white stripes onto this heart. So I lay my spacer piece of painter's tape down and then lay my two tapes that I'm using to block the paint from, if that makes sense. You can see how I'm doing that all the way down. I make sure all of my edges are pushed down really well. And then I do my pounce method where I pounce the paint onto all of the edges and let that dry as I'm painting, if that makes sense. You can kind of see what I'm doing here on each of the edges. After I have pounced along all of the edges, I then go in and fill all of the negative space in with the red paint. I give this two coats of red paint everywhere that I want the stripes to be, both on the edge and on the front. Now comes the satisfying and fun part of taking the paint off to see how well your stripes did. I remove all of the tape here and you, there's always room that if you need to go in and fix, you can go in and fix an area if you had a little bit of bleed through. I then am taking some vinyl star cutouts that I cut out with my Cricut. You could use star stickers or you could even freehand stars on here. And I pounced the blue paint on top of all of the vinyl stickers that are on there. And I do paint the front and back of this sign. Now, if you're one that likes crisp, clean lines and no distressing, then definitely don't do this step, but I love everything distressed and farmhouse. And I absolutely love the way that the red paint looks with the white underneath it when you sand it down. So I do just go ahead and sand down all of the edges. I do wanna mention that if you wanna go ahead and paint stripes on the back, definitely do that. For the sake of time in doing this, I did not do that. And where it's gonna be placed in my home, you are not gonna see the back of it. I do take the star stickers off of this blue star and then I do de-stress this. So of course, if you don't wanna do that, obviously don't. But uh, as you can see here, I love the way that this chalk paint sands when you have the white paint underneath it. I feel like it really does give it that old Americana type style, like definitely farmhouse, something that's been sitting out on your porch for a while and been weathered. We're gonna place the star on top of the heart but first I'm gonna take some antique wax with some water and I just flip a little bit of that on. I feel this just kind of gives it another little bit of uh, visual, visual, my goodness, I can't talk, visual interest. And I take some twine and wrap it around my star. I do it about four times and then I just tie it off in the back. And then I do have this cute little bow with rosette that I got from Hobby Lobby that I'm just gonna glue onto the front there. And then I also glue the star down on top of the heart. 
I think this would be so cute either on your front door. You could just set it up as just on a shelf somewhere. It would be cute on a porch. I absolutely love this. I set this on top of my china hutch and I think it looks absolutely adorable. So fun to give that stars and stripes look to any patriotic decor. This right here is more of a hack than a DIY, but we'll call it both. But they have these little uh, garden stake things for your planters at Dollar Tree. They're tin metal, they're super cute. They have lots of different designs. Now you can easily use some little uh, cutters as I showed there, but you can kind of watch how easy it is to pry this off. Uh, you just bend it back and forth and that metal is very flimsy and it will break, but you just wanna be careful not to bend your original design. So you don't have to put these in your planters or your garden, you can do all sorts of things with them. I have glued them to canvases before to make cute signs but I'm just going to use some of the tumbling tower blocks and I am just going to glue onto the bottom of each of these so that way they can stand on our tier tray I thought they were just so cute and I mean I'm loving the little patriotic truck that they have that is so cute and I did find these this week at Dollar Tree and a lot of these DIYs that I'm doing today uh, I well all of them I found all of the stuff this week so you if you hurry you can probably find all this stuff and recreate any of these so I just carefully glue those on to the back there and they just stand up so cute they're I just think they're so fun and it's such like you would pay a lot of money for these rather than just a dollar I feel like anyway what do you guys think of this hack do you like it or not one of my favorite things to do is look at the Hobby Lobby clearance section for these little signs for sign blanks because sometimes you get some really good hefty sign pieces that are really not much more expensive than buying them at Dollar Tree and I feel like they're a little bit of a better quality. So this one was cute the way it was but I don't really need that saying in my life right now so I'm just going to paint over it and make something that I will actually use and so I'm just going to make a cute little patriotic piece here. So I'm just covering that all with just some white chalk paint and it does take about three or four coats to get that complete covered there. So now I am just using some painter's tape to tape out some stripes and I'm just using a little teeny piece of tape there just kind of as my spacer so that way the lines are even and I know that I'm getting everything lined up right. So I'll just take that little extra piece off there and then I'm going to paint some cute little red stripes on here. Now when I'm taping off stripes like this, I like to put a little bit of the paint on my sponge brush here and I like to pounce up and down in a motion. Now this is sped up, so I do it a little slowly. You just wanna make sure that you're getting all of the edges. You wanna let this first layer dry completely before you go on and then you can paint like normal back and forth with strokes and everything. You just wanna seal off that space of the tape and I have run my finger over the tape to make sure that it's all stuck down. Now you can kind of see how that the coverage is after that first coat, you definitely are gonna want multiple coats of this. So now I can just kind of go back and forth just like you were painting normally. It kind of evens the paint out and everything. And I just do this on all of the stripes there. And then there's always the moment of truth where you peel back the tape here. Now it did peel a little bit of the front piece of that sign off. It doesn't matter to me because I am going to sand this and distress it and I cover it with a little bit of paint. And you can kind of see down on my bottom stripe there, there was just a little teeny area of bleed through. That is super easy to fix with just a paintbrush going in and touching that up. So that's all I'm gonna do. And then I just kind of covered that little area. I don't even know if you can see it really well where the sign tore right there. But since I'm gonna be sanding this and want it to be rustic, it's totally fine. So at first I go around the edge and I sand off all of the edges. You don't have to sand if you don't want to. I know that's very much a personal preference, but I do kind of like that worn look, have it very farmhouse. And then I kind of go back and forth on my stripes. When you're doing red and white like this, you wanna pay attention to not sanding over the entire the entire piece because what happens is you're going to make your white lines become pink uh, if you do that and you don't want to get a wipe and wipe it because it will also make them pink so i just try and stick in the white or excuse me in the red areas and just sand those only and then i just blow the excess dust off of there so i have this wind chime piece um, that came from dollar tree here and i think that it's super cute the little, little shape of america i'm so excited i've used this in another diy and i think this is just the cutest little shape. I'm just painting over all of those lines there. I paint it blue, obviously. And then I'm using just a couple of the Jenga blocks to put onto the back of it. This is just going to make it give, give it that three-dimensional like pop-out look. I think it looks a little bit more high-end, but you obviously could skip doing this part if you wanted to. And then I'm just going to put some glue on the back of those Jenga blocks and then glue it onto the little stripes there. 
I just even it out the best that I can and make sure and I just eyeball everything I don't really measure anything but I also this little star came in the kit so I went ahead and painted it white I thought it would be really cute to put on there there are little holes cut into like the little um, shape of America and that star so I'm just I covered the hole on the America with the star and then I'm covering the hole on the star with just a little finger bow from the twine and I thought it would be really cute to go around and dry brush the edge of this now I should have done this before but I didn't know that I wanted to do it but it does kind of help it pop a little bit more and so just lightly I'm going around the edges all here just to kind of help that pop a little bit more but I think this turned out so cute I love this this is a piece that I'm going to use for several years it's a perfect shelf sitter I think it's darling and really I mean it was like three dollars to make and I think it turned out so cute what do you guys think of this I found this sign at my local thrift store. It came from Hobby Lobby. You can tell it's brand new, it's never been used. I tried to peel that front off, but no such luck. So I did take my emery board and I go around all of the edges to make sure that it won't peel off at a later time. That way, uh, when I paint over this, the edges aren't gonna start uh, curling up if that makes sense so I just go around all of the edges I then give this two really good coats of um, I believe I'm using plaster is the color that I'm using obviously you can use whatever color you want and I do go over the edges on this as well to kind of give them a little bit of coverage also I found this really cute cut file the SVG online and I will go ahead and leave a link down in my description box to it if you decide to use it so if you do make this project you are going to need some type of cutting machine uh, either a, a Cricut or a silhouette and I do cut it out of both the red and the blue you need the two-tone there and then I just kind of center it with my sign I again have lost my little scrapey tool for my Cricut so I'm down to using an old old hotel key card that I have but I do scrape that down and then as I peel this back slowly I'm just making sure that everything is coming off okay so you just take your time peeling this off this is sped up a little bit so you can kind of tell how slow I really do go and then I really want this to look so old and distressed I found one online that I thought was super cute that was very similar to this but it was very very weathered looking I think the lady uh, that was selling them was charging like $80 for them so I think when I bought this cut file it was $3.50 and then I paid $2 for the sign at my thrift store so I feel like I'm doing pretty good so I do go through and sand all of the uh, wherever there is white paint at I sand and try to make um, it look really weathered I don't care that below um, you can kind of see the old sign coming through the colors of that I actually like the way that looks so if, if you're not a fan of that you can always go back over if you weren't able to get your thing off the front of the sign you can go back over with your base color of paint to cover that up so again I just go all the way around I sand a bunch and get this really nice and weathered looking I do go in with the original base color and I do dry brush over the top of the vinyl. That way it gives the vinyl a good weathered look. Obviously you can do this as a stencil uh, and kind of sand that down and do the same thing. I felt this was a very intricate design to do as a stencil however. And then I do also go in with a little bit of mineral color to kind of give it a little bit even more of an aged or distressed look. I really just wanted this to look old and weathered if that makes sense. Obviously if you don't want that you'll just leave it with um, the vinyl on there and not age it at all but I think this turned out so cute and so fun I am I don't know if I'm gonna put this on my porch or where I'm gonna hang this in my house but I am so in love with this I think this might actually be my favorite project of today so you'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think of this at Dollar Tree you get these four foam dice in a pack for $1.25 now and I'm going to use them instead of the wooden blocks. The wooden blocks would be a dollar a piece but they are much easier to paint I want you to know but I'm just showing you that I'm going to paint one red or one white and one blue and uh, these take several coats to cover up those little dice on there so just know if you want something that's a little quicker it is a little bit more expensive but much easier to paint you can definitely use the wooden blocks or maybe you have some um, but I, the foam dice work just as well it just takes a little time to paint so 
after I get all of my paint on there, I, they have these little letters. They're little metal letters at Dollar Tree. You have to buy the first 13 letters of the alphabet in one pack and the second 13 letters of the alphabet in the second pack. And of course, if you're going to do USA, you have to have both packages. So anyway, I thought it was cute and I'll use the letters for something else, but I just pull out those cute little letters there and then I'm just going to use some hot glue to glue these onto our little um, cubes here. The hot glue ended up working fine. If you had a fine tip hot glue gun, it would probably work a little bit better, but maybe even try some super glue or something. I just felt like the glue kind of seeped out a little bit, but from far away on the tear tray, you can't tell at all. So I, here we go. I think these look really cute. I love the red, white, and blue. You can stack these on top of one another if you would like to. Very simple and very easy. I hope you have enjoyed watching these patriotic stars and stripes DIYs. I had so much fun making each and every one of them. If you had a favorite project from today's video, I would love if you would let me know down in the comments. And if you like to decorate with patriotic or 4th of July decor, leave me a red, white, or blue heart down in the comments. We can see how many people love decorating with red, white, and blue. As always, I want to remind you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.